Welcome back. I've decided that I'm gonna make my third project uh, kind of an easy project, but I'm gonna make a tool holder for the chuck key. Um, I want a nice place to put it on top of the lathe um, to, as a reminder to get it off of the, the, the chuck. This isn't one with the safety. Some of these come with a spring and this must be an older one, I don't know. Uh, but the spring will pop it out so it can't stay in the chuck once you tighten it down and then you turn the chuck on the, the lathe on and this thing comes flinging out at you you know those are that's probably newbie newbie mistakes um but something that you know regardless I, i'll get better at and remember to pull it out of there but i want i want a place to put this so it's not just laying down here there wherever you you don't want to lose this thing um so i've decided i'm just gonna i'll call this mach one uh, Mark one. This is uh, it, I'm just gonna use this piece of aluminum. I'm gonna Cut it down to where I've got a little bit of material I'm just gonna measure that down Cut it a little bit strong and I'm gonna mount. I'm gonna glue the end of this To this with some JB weld JB weld beats epoxy when you're talking about machining, right? I don't have a welder. I'm not a welder and I wouldn't know how to weld aluminum to steel anyway. So I think this is gonna be fine for what I'm looking to achieve, to accomplish. Um, I'll use these magnets. I'll put those with JB Weld on the bottom of this piece, and then it'll it'll just sit upright on the side of the lathe, wet, on the side of the lathe wherever I choose, and then this will just be able to sit in there. So this will require some cleanup and machining of this part measuring uh, getting this to the length I need nothing is precision nothing is accurate this is just something to continue learning how to use the lathe and and learning how the tooling and and the machine works itself so um, first thing I'm going to do is get this measured up to where I want to part it off um, now that I think about it from learning from the last project the hammer with the nylon face I'm gonna chuck this up and just clean this outside first. Face this off so it's it's level and parallel. And then we'll come back and we'll cut this off. I'll probably just go old school, use a hacksaw, cut this off where I want it after I measure where I want it. And then I'll face it back up and we'll clean, we'll face the other end. We'll put a little chamfer on the end so that when I put this on here with the JB weld, there's a little bit of, you know, space in there for it to adhere to and get some JB weld up in there. So what we'll do is uh, get this mounted up in the chuck, the lathe chuck, and try to clean this up. Um, kind of the first time I've done that, and I'll, I'll face this off. Um, I, I still don't have, I went ahead and sent back, if you watched the last video, I returned the uh, magnetic base holder. It did not fit the base, the three H, the three H inch base of the of the uh, dial indicator that I had. So I, I, I didn't want to mess with it. I want to send it back. I got one. Um, I think I'm going to do a video on all the things I've learned through this. There's a lot of little details you got to know, and when you don't even know what to look for, you end up buying the wrong materials. So let's get this uh, mounted up. And then uh, we'll start cleaning this up. I'll uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, we're gonna continue on. Um, I'm gonna get this mounted up in the drill chuck, and then uh, we're gonna turn it down. I know we know it doesn't need to be much farther than this, so we're just gonna clamp it up um, down in this area, and then we'll just face all this off, clean all this up, get this square. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll cut this off and continue on making this piece that w so that we can JB weld it to the, uh, the piece that we're wanting to, the base, I'll call it the base. So what we wanna do is get this opened up. I think that is plenty. There. Bring it out a little bit. A 
we're going to tighten all of these up so that we don't have any slippage like that dumb screw video I did. That, I just didn't want to mar up those screws. But again, this is the whole reason. I've got this. I'm just going to lay it here. I, I, I want a kind of a, a place to, to be able to put that. Um, but there we go. I'm not sure what the run out is of this. Let's get this turned on and just visually inspect it. Um, I'm not sure. It's really not that bad. I don't have my dial indicator magnetic base, as I said, so I can't really check run out. It doesn't really matter for this part and this project. Um, those are skills that I do want to learn at some point, but for now, all we're trying to do is, is make this thing a little bit better. Um, so what I'm going to do first is face this off so that it's level, and then we'll come back and we'll just clean this up. I, I just want it to look nicer. You know, it's got this old, uh, I guess it would be oxidized uh, finish, and I want to chamfer these these edges so that, you know, it's not damaging or, or marring up my drill chuck key and uh, the, the lathe chuck key. So let's get this going. We're going to just face this off, and then we'll come back and clean up this side, the uh, outside of it. Bring this here and you know we'll kind of touch it off in this back there we go and we'll just continue on until we get that cleaned up None of this is critical. That looks good. There we go. Let's see how that looks. That's not too bad. Oh, I got a little bit more to clean up. We'll come back in, touch off. Let's get that cleaned up a little bit more. There's still a little bit of the original face. I want to get all that cleaned up. Touch it off, bring it back, bring it in a little bit, let's clean that up. I believe that'll clean it up. That's, that's it. Now there's a little bit more, why not? We're gonna do this, let's do it right. bigger of a, of a cut but it's aluminum handled it pretty well let's get those chips down in there and that's it that's cleaned up so I'll come back in and we'll uh, deburr the edges and we'll, we'll cut a chamfer but for now I want to come back since I got this tool in here and I want to clean up the outside of this and so we have a nice clean surface so what we're gonna do is bring this out in so we touch off and then there we go so what we're gonna do I'm gonna try the automatic feed and uh, we'll see how that goes um, that's what I should be able to use so we're gonna turn this on and we'll run it down and see how that goes going too fast or uh, not, but it's 
It's going really well. It's got the automatic feeding gauge. Clean it up nicely. It's not breaking chips, it's making a mess, but let me watch here. I'm gonna be able to turn this off. We're gonna turn this off. I think that, that cleaned up very nicely. Uh, if we look at that, we have a nice, clean, concentric piece. It's all aluminum. It sure made a, uh, a lot of mess of the chips. That's probably due to the type of inserts that I have. Uh, again, I don't mind. There's quite a bit of this on the floor. I'll get this cleaned up. But this is what I was going for. I think the next thing we want to do, we want to go ahead and clean up the outside edges of this and and get those chamfered and i actually changed the, another quick change tool bit around so that we could do that i'm going to get that loaded up right now let me clean some of these chips off so i'm not stepping on them getting them tangled up and in, in things and uh and then we'll uh we'll get that chamfered let me uh All right, let's get that swapped out. So we, we loosen this one up. And then we got this one here. So I've already centered that up. This is where I want it for this outside chamfered edge. I'm gonna just kind of line it up here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't want a, a sharp edge on that. What we want to do is bring this in, you know, right about there. And then I'll just bring this in until we get that nice and chamfered. Then we'll, we'll turn this so that it's getting the, uh, the inside so we don't have that problem. Or I may use my deburring tool. We'll, we'll see. That's good. That, that takes that edge off. Uh, could have done maybe more of a 45 degree angle, but th that right there is perfect for what I'm doing. Um, let me see if we can't uh, get this switched over. I don't know if I can get this. Ideally, it's you know it should be mounted the other way um, in order to deburr that, but. Uh, you know, let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if we can flip this around. I need some more holders so I don't have to waste time doing this kind of stuff, but you know that that's part of what, what we're doing here. I'm not in a hurry. This is a just a, a project or a hobby. Flip this thing around, get these tightened back up. go so now we're gonna get this tightened up all right so let's get this up here and we'll bring that in and what we're gonna do is clean up that inside edge We go learn something that's not how that works you got to have the right angle get this uh in here just right because you can't stick the whole tool bit in the bottom or you're going to rub on it i think we're going to want to really i'm sure there's a better way to do this but uh this is the angle I have. I think what I'm gonna do, let's let's abandon that and let's use the uh, deburring tool. That's why I bought it and we'll deburr that. 
And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go cut this off with a hacksaw and we'll chuck this up and we'll clean up the other end. Um, let's get this unmounted. And we will just use There we go. Just like that, that's nice and cleaned up. And that's gonna be the start of the vertical riser for the chuck key holder. I'm gonna go get this cut off and we'll bring it back. We'll mount it up in the chuck the opposite way and clean this face off. And then we'll begin to uh, work on doing the JB weld and get this thing mounted to the base. I'll bring it back. All right, next thing we're gonna do is uh, hack this off and then we'll bring it back to the lathe and we'll be able to face off this side, deburr everything else, and then we'll be able to start working on uh, our JB weld. Let's go ahead and get this uh, hacked off here. So obviously we're gonna put that on the on the lathe and we'll clean sorry, we'll clean this up. That's nice looking in. That's gonna be great for that tool. This end will get cleaned up, we'll do the same, and then we'll uh, work on JB welding that to the base. Uh, let's get you back over to the lathe and we'll finish up this piece. We're back at the lathe. Uh, we're gonna get this mounted up. I have I'm, I got a another idea. I wanted to get some soft copper inserts for this. I'm gonna cut some and kind of make them to where they're, they make sense. But for now, I do have some strips of copper uh, that my, my dad, thanks to my dad for uh, providing these. I, I wanna get these laid in here so I don't mar this finish that I made on this. This is actually pretty nice, first nice finish of something that I've made. So let's, let's try to preserve that. Uh, we'll just slide slide these bars in here. They're way too long, but I think for what we're doing, it's going to be okay. Just want to get those in there. We've got a couple more. I'm going to have to open this up a little bit. There's one here. Again, it needs to be... needs to be inside in where I'm going to be cutting that face and this should hopefully prevent the cop the aluminum from getting marred up from the jaws of this chuck and I can tighten it down nice and tight there we go the idea, we just want to clean this up. We don't want to mar this face. And then we're going to have a nice clean piece that we can uh, JB weld to the base. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned up, matching the other end, and uh, see what it looks like. Back that off.
I'll go one more, just to make sure. Let's uh, take a look at it. That's nice and clean. It's all cleaned up. It's got some burrs. We knew that was gonna happen. Now what we wanna do is chamfer this outside edge. And then again, I'm gonna use the deburring tool to do the inside. Um, it just is much easier. It's a soft material, just makes more sense. Um, so let's go ahead and get this other, other angle tool holder in, more of a straight angle. Of course, messing around, I, I was trying to get that to work, but let's uh, flip this back around where it's going to be more useful to me. There we go. So I've only got two of the square tool holders. I've got one flat parting tool holder. I don't have any parting tools. Um, and then I've got one um, boring bar holder, which again, I don't, uh, I don't have any round boring bar. So we're just going to go with, go with this. All right, let's get this over here. Get this spun up. We'll get the outside done. good enough because we're going to JB weld that on. Um, we're pretty much done with the lathe work. I'm going to use the deburring tool to clean that up. Let's get this uh, loosened up and see how those that copper did because I'm going to get these cut down to where they, they fit in there properly. There's no marring on that part at all. That's nice. Of course, we got the burr. Let's go ahead and get that cleaned up. That worked really nicely, really nice. Uh, this hole's got a little bit of a burr. I'm gonna clean that just, just so it's cleaned up as well. Let's clean the inside of that up. That's good. This little hole, not too bad, but we can clean it up too. And we'll clean the inside up as well. So that, that's a part. I made a custom part for a specific function. Now, I'm gonna bring you over to the bench where we're gonna work on gluing this up. Uh, with the JB Weld, excuse me, welding this up with the JB Weld and start to make our final product so that we can store our, our chuck key. I'll bring you back. I'm going to pick this back up. I want to get this JB Welder on here tonight. This is not the fast acting. It takes four to six hours, 24 hours to, to hold up. And I want to finish this tool holder this weekend. Um, again, I'm not looking for precision and accuracy or I would set up a jig or something to make sure this is totally square. I probably should as I'm trying to learn, but I, I just want to accomplish, you know, a usable product. Um, so what we're going to do, I, th I think what we should do is, you know, sand some of this oxidation off of this piece. Um, I think I'll just use some emery cloth, uh, emery strips that I bought. There we go. Which I showed in the previous video. Scratch this up a bit. Just to prepare it for some adhesion.
this cleaned up. Some of that oil and dirt and dust and you know, give it a get decent shot of adhering to that part that I just turned down. This was uh, 150 grit. Doesn't really matter for this purpose. I may spray paint this entire piece when it's done. Um, but for now, I just want to get it, uh, like I said, I want to get the epoxy going because it does take a few days to really harden up. Sorry, JB Weld, we're welding here. This is the metal shop, not epoxy. See if we can get down in there a little bit closer to the, it, it'll actually be welded or yeah, welded up on the, uh, the, the curved portion and not so much down in the, the actual flat, but uh, I think that'll do this off a bit. Bottom doesn't matter. So there we go. There's our two pieces. We're going to mix up a little bit of JB Weld and get this, get this mounted up. Um, I did want to JB Weld on the magnets, but in the meantime, while I was started this video series and this video i one of these magnets is attached to something i got to locate over here in my workshop it got bumped and it's somewhere so i'd like to find that these these were the magnets i wanted to use because i had them and they they fit perfectly around that let's get this uh jb weld opened up we'll get it mixed up and uh and we'll get this set so that we can hopefully finish this project this weekend. Um, I believe this would be equal parts. Let's double check on the uh, instructions. Squeeze equal parts. Good enough for me. So here's our tool, our onion board. We're gonna squeeze equal parts here and get this, get this going. I've used epoxy before, so. It's not all that complicated. I'd say about that much. I like it. That's the metal. And here's the hardener. So we don't have, we don't ruin that stuff. Let's get this mixed up. Do have plenty of time and I'm not in a hurry. I just, I need the time to find that magnet. It's, it went somewhere. It attached itself to something. I suppose that's what happens when you don't secure what you're working on. All right, I think that's pretty pretty well mixed. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna. I want to put the the holes down. So let's uh, kind of get that. On the edge, just get plenty of this mix on there, so that when I put it on there and start applying it. We got a good adhesion. So well, that's the idea. We're gonna put it here. And I do wanna fill all that in as best I can. Nothing fancy, but again, I just want it to, to stick. Stay where it's supposed to. There we go. Put that over there. I guess I did end up going down onto the flange a bit. 
which is fine. I think that will help hold it. Bring this over. Yeah. Maybe bring it up a little bit onto that. We can clean that stuff up later. But again, we're just trying to get something that will hold the tool. And that is pretty much all of the JB Weld. Let's use as much as we can on here. Put it in that hole. You can't see that. Get it to kind of we'll clean that up later. But you get it in that hole and it'll kind of lock it in, I hope. There we go. So I know that that's not perfect. And, uh, but that needs about a day to, to cure. It'll set up in four hours. So I'll come and check on it every hour or so and make sure it's not, you know, tilting one way or the other. But in the meantime, before the next clip for this video, I will, uh, try to locate this other magnet because I really want both of these on there. When I was testing, these two magnets really made it nice and solid up on top uh, of the lathe. So I'm going to end it there and let this epoxy cure. And uh, we'll come back when we have uh, found the magnet and we're ready to, or, or an alternative, and we're ready to proceed. Um, I'll bring you back. Okay, another short clip. Um, this, again, this this is slow JB Weld. Four to six hours to set up, 24 hours to cure. I don't want to sit out here for four to six hours, but I do want to put a second coat down. I want to drip some down inside and put another coat on the outside. But I'm also going to epoxy the magnets. Yes, I found the other magnet. It had... Uh, flung itself and attached to another tool. Found it, we're gonna keep track of these this time. So when I decide to, once this cures, I'm gonna JB Weld the uh, magnets to the base and then also put some JB Weld inside uh, just to give it some more and some on the outside just to, just to give it a little more beef. I, I don't want it to fall off of there. But because I don't wanna sit out here for four to six hours, I'm gonna to try to get this let's get these get this clamp on there so that it uh, kind of holds on to the piece if I can and, and keeps it stable um, let's go this direction here so as you can see it moves around and I don't like that at all if I put it like that there we go I think I can manipulate this in such a way that it will hopefully keep that's how I want it there but this side isn't touching let's push this uh, I don't like that well that's not what I wanted maybe I just need to sit out here for four to six hours ha! let's Schmooze some of this back up in there. It is setting up a little bit. Again, I just want it to adhere. Again, get get that JB Weld up in there. Smash that up. There, that side's fine. I think that'll settle. You know what? Maybe I'll sit out here and just drink a beer. So this sets up let's go that route that certainly didn't help out putting that clamp on there made things worse doesn't have to be precision I just want it to look I don't want it to look cockeyed every time you look at it okay that's gonna be it for tonight um, we're gonna let this set up and then the next video will be or the next clip for this video will be mounting the magnets and putting some JB weld down inside there just to help adhere it from both sides and uh, you know we're we're on track to making this uh, tool holder for the lathe chuck key that's the the objective I'll see you on the next clip only a second for you but uh, a full day for me
we're back at it. Uh, the JB Weld has, it's, it's setting up nicely, nice enough to proceed um, and move on to the next steps. I was going to put more JB Weld around the base of this to just kind of further solidify it. I still might if I mix some up. Um, it's honestly pretty, I don't think you can see in there, but it's pretty well, uh, you know, solidified. There's, there's plenty inside there. You know, there's plenty on the outside. This isn't perfect. It looks like total crap. I may try to scrape some of this off um, before it really gets hard just to clean it up a bit. Actually, I will. Um, but I'll get that cleaned up. Matter of fact, I'll do that before um, the next step. My next step that I want to do is get these. Uh, sorry about the sirens. We've got a bad storm here. Hope, hope everybody's okay. Um, I'm going to glue these on the base of this, get this cleaned up nice. And uh, that's going to be the, the most basic tool holder that you can do. But it gave me a little bit of opportunity to use the, uh, the automatic feed on the lathe um, and create a, an actual functional piece add-on for the lathe that will actually serve a purpose. Um, I'm going to get this cleaned up and then I'll bring you right back and uh, we'll get these magnets glued on. Um, it's not going to be interesting to watch cleaning up this uh, epoxy. But I do want to get this cleaned up. That way I can get the get the uh, magnets uh, glued on there and let it dry for another 24 hours. This is not the quick cure JB Weld. Uh, this is the stuff that takes at least 24 to 48 hours to cure up. Um, I'll bring you right back. All right, I got this cleaned up good enough for what this is. And again, I'll call this Mark One tool holder, Chuck Key tool holder project. Um, I just, if, if you don't have any of these uh, plastic or, uh, you know, uh, razor blades, you should grab some. They're really good for cleaning material that you don't want to scratch up and mar up. Um, I've used these on, um, on our, our cars. You know, you buy a car, they put the dealer stickers on, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not, you know, I paid you, you know, a ridiculous amount of money overcharge, especially nowadays with the pandemic and everything and the shortages of the chips and all that, the overcharge on cars. And then you go and stick a sticker to advertise your dealership on my car. It's just not my thing. Grab some of these. They're very safe. They don't mar the paint and you're able to get those dumb stickers off without risking, uh, using like a razor blade or a uh, exacto knife or something and actually scratching your new car paint. Anyway, you know, just a, just a little tip. They're just plastic razor blades. You can get them on, well, Amazon and anywhere else. So uh, just something I recommend. All right. So all I'm going to do is mix up a small amount of JB Weld and we're going to weld these magnets onto the back side of this. They will stick if I just put them on there because they're magnets. I just don't want them to slide around when I'm pulling this thing off of the lathe or moving it around. So this is uh, just a, a little bit further. This is gonna take another day to cure, but you know, it's a rainy day. Let's get some JB Weld mixed up um, and let's get those magnets on there and we'll keep moving forward. So use our quote unquote breadboard here. Come back, get a little bit in here. We don't need much, probably more than I need. Get this put on and let's get the hardener in here. Get that put back on, get this mixed up. That'll be plenty. And if I have some extra, I'll put it on the outside maybe. Let's get this mixed up. Grab one magnet. We'll go with the, the dirty side. Or we'll just, maybe we'll 
Yeah, we'll do that that way. I want to get it on all of it. I'll get this cleaned off. All right, put this on here. Snaps on really nice. We'll wipe that off. I don't want that hardening on there. Of course, uh, it should clean up nice like this one did. Um, fortunately, it seems to, with the longer cure time, you got plenty of time to kind of clean it up. Let's get this side down here. Lines right up. Let me clean this off my fingers before it makes too big a mess. And then what I think I'll do you know, since I got this mixed up, let's peel some of that off. Let's scrape some of this down on the inside. I should probably try and show you. That's the point of this channel, things you can do. Let's scrape that off, but I want to get this down in that channel just to kind of help adhere it, get it around it, you know, put it on the outside. I want those magnets to stay. Again, same thing. Put this over here on all the sides. You know, I may move that around. I just want it to have plenty of adhesion to where I'm not worrying about that popping off of there. I'll come back and we'll clean these off with that towel. There we go that on there, clean it off again, it's fine, it's fine, that's not too bad, I think I got plenty, plenty on there, get a little bit more down here in this corner, sorry if I'm out of shot, I'm just trying to Get this all taken care of. Squish that down a little bit. There we go. I like that better. Some of this side. I like that better. All right. And I think that's going to hold. I mean, it's a magnet for one plus. Plus. The JB Weld, I don't, I just don't see this going anywhere. Why would it? All right, what a mess. But, we're making something. Let's get this wiped off. There we go. A little bit more. Doesn't need to be perfect. JB Weld on there. Weld it up. All right. And then off again. I think that's fine. Good enough. You're never going to see the bottom of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this another 24 hours to, to cure. Maybe 48. Um, uh, just want to make sure all that's cured and those magnets won't pop off of there. Um, and then we'll have a part that we can mount on the lathe and a place to store a chuck key. I'll bring you out in a day or two. Well, just a few seconds for you, but uh, another 24 hours has passed. And this sloppy looking mess here is what I'm going to call my third project. Um, it's going to be useful. We're going to test it out. This was, uh, this is going to be my chuck key holder. This is what it looks like finished. It's epoxy. Sorry. It's, it's JB Weld. We welded this thing together. I don't have a welder, so this is what we did. And uh, it is a little messy. I might try to scrape some of the 
stuff off the bottom, off the magnets, just so it sits flush without problem, but I think uh, it's pretty much good to go. I'll scrape a little bit of this off. It is coming off. So, let me get this one. Clean this up a little bit. Just so there's no high spots, so it sits flush. So, there it is. Let's uh, take it over the lathe, give it a try, and uh, see where its new home will be. Got you out of the camera. Let's uh, take it over the lathe, and we'll find its permanent home. I think we're going to put it right, right there. The magnets are nice and strong. That's about as good a spot as I can put. But with the magnets, I do have the flexibility to put that thing wherever I need to. Um, there we go. Now I have a place to put the chuck key and I shouldn't lose it. So I'm gonna call it a success. It's a nice, I was able to turn the out, the OD, the outside. I was get, able to put some chamfers on the aluminum material. Had a chance to experiment with some JB Weld and came up with a, a suitable solution for a first tool holder for this chuck key. Hope you enjoyed, hope you see you on the next video um, where we always try to make things a little bit better than they were. Thanks for watching.